Happy Monday! It's Le Seraphim comeback day, Unforgiven. And I seriously cannot wait to watch the music video, listen to all the B-side tracks and many more content that the Fimmies are gonna put out. I'm sorry, my voice is a little bit crooked. I don't know why. And also my neighbors are doing some lawn work and yeah, but it's not gonna stop me about talking this whole week about Le Seraphim and also Stray Kids is gonna have a comeback and there is gonna be so much content out this month and <sighs> so many things to talk about. Anyhow, let me watch the music video and we'll talk about it later. It's time for the final countdown. It's Tuesday. Yesterday I was working on a couple of projects so I couldn't do an MV reaction like I wanted to. But, oh my. So, first reaction. Where is my spoiler? <laughs> normally, we, or well, normally, I mean, only two times because, yeah. Uh, we got by the end of the music video, the main music video, a spoiler for the next comeback. This time, we didn't. Which made me think that... This is the end of the first Le Seraphim chapter. Um, because why else would there be no spoiler? I mean, I think Le Seraphim, their team, is one of the most structured teams I've ever seen in K-pop so far. Like, they know what they're doing. And... Um, before a comeback happens, we always have Lenny first. Um, and some other stuff that I'm like, they know exactly when and what is gonna happen. So that we didn't got a spoiler, um, uh, makes me curious. Is this the end of the first chapter or they are not sure yet about the second chapter or their next comeback that they decided not to include a spoiler. Which makes sense. And I'm not gonna hold it against them because I actually really like the music video. I just read actually that they had to cut out a lot of stuff, a lot of um, um, Sakura stuff, uh, Chewan, and what was there more? Oh yeah, everyone was supposed to be riding horses and not just Chewan. Which makes sense because I saw that they were all in training for horse riding and then I was like why is the only one on a horse J1 well we note that the other members are also okay riders and J1 as well she's also just an okay rider I believe uh, Kazuha was the only one who had more experience on a horse I'm not entirely sure so yeah anyway even though they had to cut a lot of stuff I actually really liked the music video. I know some people said that it didn't make sense. Why? Uh, there was someone beeping. But personally, I did really like it. I really liked the vibe, especially at the ending, funny enough. Um, could it have been more cohesive? Yes, I do think so. However, especially the last minute, I think so. I loved the step up vibes that I got from the dance scene on the cars. I mean, step up Miami. If you've seen it, you probably exactly know what I'm talking about. And I got those vibes. Besides that, I loved how they made use of the environment that they were in because I believe this was also a shot in Thailand. Um, Sugar revealed in one of his clips because he wanted to shoot his music video in Thailand, and then he was running into Le Seraphim. Why is everyone beeping today? So yeah, personally, I really liked the music video. I do think that Antifragile was a bit more cohesive. Nevertheless, I still liked it. I also was blown away by the music because I was scared that they would have overdone the music Midwestern cowboy style. I was really afraid that it would be overproduced and I don't think it was. I think the whole album 
in general is not cohesive in the way how it sounds. The message, however, is very much all in line. And also what I liked about it is that it's a very summery album. I think it really fits this time of year when the weather is getting better, the sun is going to shine hopefully a bit more today. It's very, very cloudy. Um, and I think this is the right move for Le Seraphim. I like the fun sound. I like that they are still trying out different music styles, but also stay true to who they are. Um, but I've decided that I will get into the songs at the end of this video and now I'm just gonna live my work life um, and I will also of course talk about bookish stuff, mangas, language studies hopefully because I really really want to pick up Korean this week again and I will talk to you soon. I got meal on this lovely Wednesday evening. I got the book the Society for Soulless Girls by Laura Stephen. I am basically body reading this with a friend of mine, but before I do, I want to finish Solitaire by Alice Osman. It will probably take me some time, so it will be after this vlog that I start reading my new book, but I enjoyed this book for now. It's Thursday evening and tonight I want to dedicate to basically watch everything that was still on my to watch list when it comes down to Stray Kids and Le Seraphim. Well, not everything is gonna happen, but at least I want to, wait, let's focus, uh, watch Time Out. I just watched part two and then right now I want to watch part three and hopefully because... I completely forgot that Le Seraphim, their anniversary, was last Tuesday. So I still also need to watch that. Um, yeah, basically watching a lot of stuff. I just finished watching all the Stray Kids episodes that I wanted to see. And now I want to watch Le Seraphim, but I'm so confused because we have the first family party show. Then the zip, and then we're Le Seraphim. Like, I'm so confused. I'm thankful for all the content, but what does this all mean? <laughs> I'm so confused. Anyway, this is definitely a good way to celebrate their anniversary, even though I am two days late. It's a Friday, and yesterday evening, after watching all the YouTube videos that I could, I actually practiced my Korean speaking. It went very really well, but not that I wanted to record it and put it on the internet because there is still for me a lot to improve on. Anyway, today I have some projects to complete before the weekend. And yeah, then I have weekend and I'm gonna do some fun stuff and I will take you guys with me. And by the end of this vlog, of course, I will give a review on the Seraphim, their full... No, sorry, their studio album. It's Saturday and all my plans got cancelled last minute. So, what am I gonna do? Well, I am not feeling too well for some reason, so it's a good thing that my plans got cancelled. But, I do want to do something. And that is cleaning and reorganizing my room. So I have some German books over here. I need to put them over there. Um, this cosmetic that should be somewhere else. I want to redo this all. And I have also some mess over here. Um, so yeah, enough things to do. Before I forget, I also want to update you guys on my music shelves. I know it's still a bit disorganized because of what's going over here. Um, but Jisoo is over here, Namjoon is over here, so I also placed his Funko Pop over here um, because I have a Jisoo Polaroid down here on the black pink shelf and I firstly had RM over there because I was like, it's black pink, so it looks cute, I guess. 
Then I moved my Stray Kids and Les Seraphim all on this shelf, especially because I also have them in this picture frame. But I think that I want to reorganize this all a little bit differently. But I think I'm gonna do that in my next vlog because I am gonna buy some things from Ikea today. <laughs> I want the combined word tonight and today together, so it sounded a bit off. Anyway, and I have some Blackpink and BTS all over here. Um, my binders and, well, the box is filled with other K-pop stuff. But this probably will go down there. So I am gonna make space already because, yeah, everything is gonna change a bit. Um, so I can expand my K-pop collection, I guess. Because I think it would be nice if Lucerfim and Stray Kids have their own shelves, especially because the Stay and Stay merch will come next week. And also some Lucerfim merch. So yeah, I think it would be nice if they will go together. And since BTS and Blackpink, yeah, won't be releasing that much, <laughs> um, I think this still would be fine. Oh, I might want Blackpink down there actually. Huh, sorry, I was thinking out loud. I hope you don't mind. Welcome on sunny Sunday. So this is my updated shelf tour here by my music shelves. So Jisoo over here and RM. RM is gonna be replaced next week. I am sorry, but you have been here for four months. Oh my. It's actually quite long. So yeah, there will be something else, but that's for another time in the next vlog, basically. So over here we have Blackpink, Stray Kids and Les Seraphim. And yeah, one empty shelf that will be filled again in the next vlog. My bookshelves, my TBR for the month of May. I know it's very um, ambitious, but... I like a challenge. Then over here I have my other books that still need to be read. Uh, my Korean non-fiction and literary shelf. Plus a little bit of Dutch and German non-fiction and fiction. Just because I have no other place for them as of right now. Down here I have my manga collection and then some K-pop stuff like my binders and whatnot. Actually I wanted to put my books over here where the mangas are now standing. Just because it would look better. But that does not fit over here so this is what it is for now. But hopefully once I have read more of my TBR the books can go down so it looks just more aesthetically pleasing, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. Those are the shelves updates, but everything will change. Well, not everything, but a bit will change next week when uh, some merch arrives. Welcome by the wrap up. So you probably noticed, especially if you watch the next vlog, that this is quite a few days later. That's Purely because I hadn't formed opinions yet. It was more that I was vibing with the songs and connecting with them on a different level instead of having something to say, I guess. Uh, anyway, I just posted the blog about my thoughts on Unforgiven. Um, yeah, so guys, I'm not gonna talk about the songs that are on the album from Fearless or Anti-Fragile because I think it's pointless. Uh, I've talked about these songs in other vlogs. I just think it's a very smart business and marketing decision that those songs are as well on the studio album um, because the studio album always gets new fans because a lot of people don't want to get involved with just a mini album, they want more songs. And I think putting them on a studio album, first of all, it's marked for the lore. So for the super fans that want to know everything about Le Seraphim. 
but it's also such a fun thing to do for people who are new and basically get to know them and why are people sending me all kinds of messages. Let's go from the start with Burn the Bridge. I love Burn the Bridge. It's the perfect intro song. I think they are even better or is even better than the other intro songs even though I thought those were already so good already but this one is more about storytelling and I absolutely adore it. Unforgiven. I am happy that the western cowboy sound wasn't too much because I was really scared for that. But yeah, working together on this with Nile Rogers, it's perfect. Also, I realized when I went and seeked out the lyrics and went in depth with them, I realized why it makes so much sense that it has this cowboy vibe to it. Because, how do I explain this? look into the lyrics and it makes completely sense and I absolutely adore it. Maybe they also changed some of the lyrics to fit more the cowboy style but nevertheless I think it's perfectly done and I love this song for the summer. Also talking about storytelling I think this is the perfect start of the songs because with Unforgiven you basically say okay fine I will be Unforgiven I'm the villain in the story, fine, I'm gonna deal with this and I'm gonna go my way. Love it. And with no return, so even though I did not expect this sound from Le Seraphim, I think it's more fitting for a group like Kepler, um, it does give a little bit of the younger sister of No Celestial. But because this is a newer album, you would expect that this would be the older sister of No Celestial. So the sound I'm a bit confused by, but the storytelling, again, I love that it sounds like the next chapter after Unforgiven. Basically, you are still happy about this new adventure, even though you might be confused, you're like, woohoo, let's go! <laughs> And then with Eve, Psy, Psy, and the Bluebirds, Bluebirds, <laughs> Bluebirds, Blue, oh god, how do I, mm, okay, this is just a blooper part. Um, <laughs> the next song, <laughs> um, yeah, basically all these females are the bad guy in their stories, and... I like that the Seraphim decided to, or well, the production team or whoever decided to do this, um, to start the song with a bit of the, the Hydra. The Hydra? Hydra? Did I pronounce it very Dutch? Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, because it was such a big hit when they did their end of the year performances on music shows. So I love that that part is in there and this song gives the album as Unforgiven part, so much body, and I like that. And yeah, well, it's basically again the next chapter, they are full force into this new adventure. Um, but then with Fear Not, you can tell that insecurity creeps in, and um, what, what else? Yeah, so, but also being scared, but it also tells the moments of silence, the things that normally aren't told in a story as much, it isn't as fleshed out, but I love that with Fair Not or Between You, Me and the Lamp Host, that the story does get told. And even though at first I was like, why is there a ballad? after such a powerful song but it makes sense because it's the next chapter and after you're so super hyped that's when the insecurities creeps in so i personally think it's just perfect <laughs> to go in there and normally i'm not a fan of ballads but because it is 
bit more upbeat. And I'm not gonna lie, because you can tell Jun Jin is the producer on this song because it has a little bit of Taylor Swift vibe and we all know she's a big Taylor Swift fan. Flash forward. It's just a happy song because you made it, you're there. It's perfect for this upcoming summer to be on repeat. Also, like Fire in the Belly, it has a little hint towards Anti-Fragile, but it completely stands on its own. Also, this song was on repeat this week because I had so many milestones that I will be talking about in my next vlog because I'm also filming this week. <laughs> and um, every time when I had this milestone, this song was on repeat. It makes me so happy and it makes sense because the storyline in this song is about that you have security again in your life. You have ambition again and you're already for this bigger adventure that you are waiting for. Which is so much fun because does this mean that the next album is gonna be super different? Because we didn't got a spoiler! Like, <laughs> where was my spoiler? But then again, this might be a trilogy and we're gonna get new vibes from the Seraphim. I don't know. I think part of the vibes will still be there in the next comeback. Um, but they of course grew up. And especially because Jinjin Jin is now also one of the producers. I am so curious what's next. I mean, I'm still gonna enjoy this album and they may take as long as they need for the next work. Um, but you can already tell that. It's gonna be different from what we have heard before and I'm all here for it. In conclusion, this album is perfect for the warmer weather. I love the storytelling in the lyrics and the album itself. Um, it might have a lot of genres, but I think they accept maybe no return. That's the only mm, critical part I have. Um, Every song does sound completely like a Le Seraphim song and I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm so happy for the girls. I think they did amazing also on all the music shows and all the other content that they are currently showing on YouTube and we're not. Um, I think they are doing amazingly. So that was it for now. Hopefully in two weeks well, two weeks for you guys, just one week for me. Uh, my Le Seraphim album will arrive and also the Jiju photo album book from them. Because my strictest one arrived in the next vlog. <laughs> okay, anyway, I hope to see you guys next time. Have a good day, weekend, evening, morning, whatever. <laughs> Bye!